<laughs> Yikes! Thanks, Olivia, for letting me know that I was muted. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday. So today we're mostly going to be focusing on music um, and with our special guest, Olivia Tai, who's going to be talking a little bit about the devices that she uses to get higher quality audio, both on her desktop when she goes live through the broadcast studio and also on mobile when she, go live, she's, she goes live from there. So without further ado, let's bring on our guest, Olivia, and I'll go ahead and unmute you ahead of time so that you don't do the same thing. <laughs> I was like, I think he doesn't know that he's mute. <laughs> yeah, and I just said, I'm going to mute us, and I'm going to start, and then I forgot to unmute <laughs> We got really excited. That's the beauty of live, you know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I was also running a little late, so that, that I may have been rushing a little bit there at the start. That's um, my fault. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. Hi, Karen. Hi, hi Mal. Hi, hi. Hi, Joanne. Hi, 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 hi. Richard, good seeing you. You seen? How's it going? I saw you on Reda's broadcast earlier. Um, where is Peter? Peter is um, going to be joining us again tomorrow. He's going to be taking care of the roundtable. I'll be doing the tutorial Tuesday for today, and then on Thursday he'll join me again for the updates and, and whatnot. So. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. Olivia, so before we get into like the tutorials, I'd love to hear a little bit more about, you know, your career in music and how all of that got started. Uh, well, uh, I've been playing music my whole life, like a good, uh, stereotypical Asian kid. Uh, so I played piano, I played violin, then I picked up guitar by myself, and I never really thought that I would ever go into music because um, I was always very academic. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I got into music when I was like 15, around the time when um, my dad went to prison. So it was kind of like a, an escape. Um, and then later, my mom also uh, got went to jail. So <laughs> it, was, it was kind of like a really, um, it was kind of an escape for me, music, and then the career just kind of went alongside with it. So I think that like genuine authenticity angle was always always a thing. Um, and then for fun, uh, I started my YouTube channel when I was like seventeen. Uh, and back in the days, uh, it was a lot less competition. It was a lot easier to kind of take off, and that's what happened. Um, and once YouTube started getting a little bit more edited, and people started going on there and making these amazing videos, I, I kind of lost that edge because that wasn't what I was about. I was about these like these raw covers and like raw videos that were like acoustic. And so once I heard about live streaming, um, I started on blog TV. So this was like, what, 09? So 2009, 2008, that's when I started on blog TV. And I had a Tuesday night show every Tuesday. Um, and that's, that kind of kicked it off a little bit, but then that kind of died out. And then when Periscope came around, um, I just kind of took that and ran with it. Uh, I was, I think, on Periscope, um, live streaming almost on a daily basis, um, building kind of a fan base through that. I discovered how to loop while I was building my Periscope fan base and like building this Periscope channel. Um, and then I kind of revived a lot of things. Like in music, we're constantly trying to quit. <laughs> and uh it's just such a volatile um industry and especially when you're like independent i've been signed before and then i've like done the independent thing and then um just kind of it's so unstable um and one of those times <laughs> hi everybody so um one of those times was when periscope came around i kind of thought that i was gonna quit so i was like you know what i'm just gonna go in here and see what happens i'm just gonna like practice and take some requests and stuff and then I got featured on Periscope a few times and that really kicked things off um and from that point on I just kind of fell in love and um understood and really grasped the concept of live streaming and like look at this community that that's here like the live streaming community is like no other so yeah, that's that's really where I am, and now I I really love live streaming. Featured so many times on Periscope, exactly, <laughs> Joanne. Um, so I'm so incredibly grateful for that because if it wasn't for that, I don't think I would be here, like talking about music 
again, you know, it just kind of restarted everything. So, so, so cool. Uh, I think, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's where I am. Yeah. So you kind of covered both my questions that I had ready, which was how did you get into live streaming music the second time around? Um, what what about your American Idol experience? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and how that went for you? Yeah, that was super cool. Um, I try by the time I got on to American Idol, I already tried out 10 years in a row uh, because I'm insane. Uh, so, um, if you've ever tried out for any of these shows or like heard of anyone trying out for these shows, you know that it is brutal. That process is crazy. It's absolutely insane. Like you, like, I, I, I think it's always been a dream of mine to be on American Idol just because I was such a fan and I was like 13 years old from the first season. And I was like, when, when am I going to be old enough to try out? Not that I'm good enough, but I'm going to, you know, when am I old enough? I just want to try. So... Um, I found out that I had to be 16. So from 16 all the way until 26, I just kept on auditioning. I was like, and I would audition for American Idol. I auditioned for The Voice. I auditioned for AGT. I auditioned for all of them. And I've always gotten really close or I've been on a few shows. But um, this one in particular was so crazy because I was invited to audition, which I mean, I got to appreciate that. Like after you've auditioned yeah. for so many years, you okay fine i can get an invite oh my okay <laughs> so um so then i get invited i audition for it uh probably the least prepared i've ever been for an audition because i think by that time i already wanted to give up again <laughs> so it's like i'm not a quitter and yet i am i'm like a I'm like a half-ass quitter it's it's great so, <laughs> you're bad at quitting that's yeah, a good really bad <laughs> <laughs> so so I'm going in there I had just gone through this like whole phase where I was um writing like a lot of music and I, by that time I had written like maybe 250 songs or something and I went in there didn't know I hadn't sang a cover in over a year or something like that and I've just been playing original music so I walked in there and I had just performed Killing Me Softly for do you know who Dante Bosco yeah. is? Okay, so anyway, Dante Bosco, a friend of mine, uh, and I just played Killing Me Softly at his birthday party, and that was the only cover I knew. <laughs> so I sang that song, and then, um, and, and I sang that song acoustically on the guitar, very sloppily, I think it was like a 30 second thing. <laughs> they, they looked at each other and they're like, do you have anything else? And I was like, yes and they were like how about without guitar i was like all right cool like an upbeat song and i had just done a sponsored thing for use uh soy milk i don't know if you know this brand but it's like it's this asian soy yeah. milk brand and um they just sponsored me for this soy milk thing and i played like the like a cup thing with uh bruno mars's man what is that song uptown funk uh -huh. so i did that and then uh, they looked at each other again, and they're like, yes. That's a yes. <laughs> and I was like, wait, seriously? <laughs> and yeah, I guess that's what it took, like 10 years of auditioning for the same show. Like, I got onto the show, made it to um, group rounds, which is like, brutal i didn't understand how brutal this show was and i like have a new respect for anybody who's ever been on one of those shows um and that's gone you know even further than you know where where i've gone and i'm like geez that whole process is just incredibly brutal it's like it's a crazy process yeah definitely i mean just by watching from the outside i can only imagine what it's like in the inside and all the hustle and bustle but congratulations on that <laughs> that, that 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 speaks volumes to your resiliency um to be able to do that for 10 years um so now going back into the live streaming world and broadcasting what like the basics what do you need to live stream music to get good quality audio so right now um we are using high quality audio from just simply the um, Logitech Brio. So um, if you have like a Logitech webcam, you're probably going to be able to get 
pretty good audio. So this is from my experience of using Logitech even before the Brio came out, like just as a 1080p um, webcam, they have really, really great audio quality. So if you're just going for like basic acoustic performances, I think that's a really, really good way to go. I personally don't like the like built in um, webcam or mic from, you know, like the MacBook Pro even like I think I have the latest one. And I still I think that the quality in there is just not that great. <laughs> but that's why I got the Logitech Brio. Um, and so that's really awesome. Um, and then if you want to kind of up your game a little bit, you can get an interface. Um, so I've heard a lot of other musicians talk about this too. And um, my first interface was the um, Scarlet. So the Focusrite Scarlet. Um, and you can get this, like you can get the one that has um, different, like, one input, two inputs, if you're playing and singing at the same time, um, or you can get one with four inputs. Um, and that, that's a really cool one. I have that now as like my backup. <laughs> you always have to have a backup. So that's like my backup um, setup now. Uh, my main setup is actually a um, Apollo Twin. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I have a, I have the Apollo Twin. So, uh, no, I'm sorry. Messed up. <laughs> I have the Apollo Quartet, <laughs> which I also use for um, my home studio. So basically, like, my home studio setup is the same as the one that I would use for live streaming, just because um, I think that's really important. And it, it, it can really kind of make or break your your live streaming platform right so yeah. um that's a really awesome one that i connect to like my looping pedal my kurtzville keyboard um my guitar my mixer everything so um super cool teach us how to play instruments <laughs> <laughs> that, that's gonna be like another another episode <laughs> yeah that would be a whole thing for you um, oh yeah that'd be super fun so for someone that's completely new to potentially using an interface what what does it entail? What do you need to plug in? How do you get it to your computer? Do you need software on top of the HAPS Broadcast Studio? What else do you really need? So I think the Focusrite itself is a plug and play. So you really can just like plug that USB straight into your keyboard and it would, a keyboard, <laughs> straight into your computer and it would just register as like another microphone. And the reason why you need that is because for any like high quality microphone or even to plug your um, guitar in, for example, straight to your computer, you can't just plug it straight into your computer, right? You have to have an interface. So that interface really is, is really easy to use. But if you were to like up the level a little bit and you got an Apollo Twin or an Apollo Quartet, um, then you would have to also download the software that comes with it, which is Universal Audio. Um, and that would be your... Um, your audio program basically that you can like play mm -hmm. with it comes with a mixer on in the program and it's great to mix it because i heard a lot of people talking about um the levels in our community chat this morning so i think the levels are really um important because then you can kind of mix your own audio um i believe when we switch to high quality audio we have that power and nothing's like being drowned out um, left and right, but I think on the standard it, it does. So yeah, I think it's really cool. Um, <laughs> the audio interface. A lot of a lot of questions. I'll let you go ahead and address some of those YouTube ones that are all addressed to you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Somebody said happy Chinese New Year. Hello, Sunlin Philo. Um also the Behringer interface. Yeah, I also have the X Air. So um I have the X Air for my mixer and it that's really cool. I love the Behringer X Air. It's brilliant um really cool effects and stuff on there too um but that's a little advanced as well so i don't want to get like too complex um but yeah so hello from providence hello um studio 192 interface user here love personas equipment oh very cool studio um you celebrate chinese year of course um are you chinese very uh i want an apollo twin yeah apollo twin is really awesome Making music is so complex and much equipment your stuff attaches to before it connects to the computer. <laughs> so many wires. It's true. I actually have a, what what I do with that, it's a, it's a music hack if you are interested. Um, you get a label maker and you type out the thing, uh, like keyboard cord or whatever. So you type keyboard and then don't cut the label and just type keyboard again. And then it prints like a double label. And you just cut that and you wrap it around the cord that it belongs to. 
and that's how I keep my chords organized. That is really smart. So can you can you elaborate a little bit about that? Like, why is it so complex? What what exactly are all of these things that you're plugging and playing with? So um, the interface allows me to uh, connect it to my mixer, and then also allows me to connect it to my high uh, my high quality microphone. So it's vital to making making everything sound right. And I think um, I probably have one of the most complex. I don't, I don't want to say like the most complex, but I have a very complex setup just because I am a looper and I need to plug in my keyboard, my guitar, my violin, my looper, um, and whatever else I want to plug my ukulele now that I have an ukulele. So there's a lot of things that like a lot of moving parts. And so that's why I need the Xair. So the reason why I need the X-Air is because the X-Air can plug in all of those things. So the X-Air is the mixer that I have to plug all of those instruments into so that I can control the levels, make sure the right effects are on them, whatever it is. And then the X-Air plugs into the Apollo Quartet, which I used to record. Technically, at that point, I could really use the Focusrite or the Quartet, but the Focusrite is actually in Hawaii, so I have to use the Quartet here. Um, and so I plug that in, and then that is what goes into the computer. Got it. So essentially, everything is happening before it even reaches your computer. And then once it does, at that point, it's just it's easier. <laughs> so all the complexity is like way before you even get to the computer. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So for, for someone that's just getting into interfaces, um, what do they, like if they just want a, an inch, one instrument set up with a high quality microphone, what are the cables that they need? Um, and what do you recommend as far as someone entry level? Yeah. Okay. So like Helen Wallace is saying, it doesn't need to be complex. It depends on the equipment you're using, right? A cheap analog USB mixer that has phantom power would suffice. It's true. You can definitely do that. Um, and if you're, you know, just starting, I would say like a USB mic would even be great. But I have also seen some USB mics that work, um, like it's even less, less, uh, high quality than say like a Logitech Brio, just a microphone that's built in. So USB mics can be very, very deceiving. And, um, I, I think that's, that's, that's just coming from experience. I've used so many different USB mics and it's, just not that fun. Um, but yeah, you can definitely use, you know, an analog USB mixer that has phantom power and that would definitely work. Um, I would say Focusrite is definitely one of them. Uh, you can use that and it's very simple. You just have a Focusrite plugged into your computer. Um, get your um, an auxiliary cord and then the microphone cord and then you've got your guitar and your, your microphone set up. And you can do that. You can use um, different kinds. Uh, what about the blue brand mics? I personally love blue. Um, however, I would say that, um, my voice sounds best on either a gold reference or, um, a U87. So those are studio mics. Sorry. That's what I'm talking about. Studio equipment. But on live, I actually use the Sennheiser, uh, E965. So that is the one that my voice personally sounds best with, I think. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the, the mics that I go with. I've seen some blue mics on HAPS before, um, but I haven't seen them for musicians. I've mostly seen them for podcaster type of individuals. Um, is that, is there a reason for that? Or is there like, do certain microphones work better for, for, for vocals for musicians? Or is that just come down to preference? I definitely think it's a preference thing. Um, I was really into blue no blue mics for a while. In fact, a lot of like the old school Periscope scopes that I did, they're all through my baby bottle. No, this was a baby bottle. Yeah, it was a baby bottle because the my Bluebird got stolen, so it was a baby bottle. <laughs> so um, the baby bottle mic and um, a lot of the YouTube videos, I also use that. And um, yeah, so yeah, like Helen... Helen is saying Phantom Power would power an uh, XLR mic. Um, I also would avoid a USB mic. Yeah, yeah, the USB mics are very deceiving. I wish they weren't so, but they are. Sennheiser is insane. I thought Sony was great, but if I was rich, I'd get the Sennheiser. 
<laughs> yeah, it's the best. It really is. It's this is best. And um, yeah, and then comparing the like the nine thirty five to the nine sixty five, the nine sixty five is like significantly better. So it's awesome. Um, but yeah, it's so great to see all names that I'm familiar with because of uh, video production, like Sennheiser, Sony, all still make microphones for the video production world, and um, so that. <laughs> I kind of get it, but I don't get it at the same time. <laughs> Love it. So um, a lot of people always have questions about, well, what if I don't have a computer? Um, can I still produce high quality audio? And how do you do that? So I discovered recently this uh, microphone that I thought was really cool. I'm actually going to switch over to, um, hold on, I'm going to switch over right now actually maybe pablo you can here here so go ahead and try next oh um turn off the speaker whatever yeah whatever's playing public audio out let's see it's probably the computer if the computer's speakers test Okay. So can you hear me now? Yes. Uh huh. All right. So this is actually using the audio. Wow. Um, and this is by uh, Sabina tech. I will post a link. You can just get this on like Amazon. Um, super cool, super com compact. And what it does is it actually is able to kind of drown out sound. Like I, if I were outside, for example, and I needed to um, do a cover or whatever. Um, uh, did it work? I'm using the audio well, and I can actually adjust it. So if I don't want it to have, um, if I don't want it to have reverb, so this is where it is. Yeah, you can get it from there. If you don't, if I don't want it to have reverb, I can actually take it off. So watch. So now I have no reverb at all. <laughs> um, Olivia probably had a 36 inch monitor. I actually have three monitors. So each of the monitors are 27 inches. So right now I'm using the, um, the laptop monitor and then I can use the other monitors too, just to like, you know, figure it out. Um, yeah, so this is no, no reverb using the audio wow and um, full um, noise reduction so you shouldn't be able to hear too much like background noise and uh yeah so this is this is what i'm using for that yeah you can instantly hear the difference between that microphone and also be between when you had the reverb on and when you had it off when you had the reverb on it <laughs> like you were almost going through uh oh can you not hear me Test, test, test. Now I can hear. Okay, perfect. I, I think we should just disconnect the phone for now while we have while we chat about um, that. So when you turned off reverb, you had to go back to the app of the audio well and then come back to haps, right? Yeah. So would you so it would be best to probably do all of this before you go into haps because if you do leave the haps app, it's essentially could time out your connection. So for everyone that's that's watching and you're trying to broadcast from your phone, make sure that all of your settings for that device that you're using are um, ready for you to use for when you go live. Um, otherwise, you will have to be bouncing back and forth. Got it. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's a really cool option because it provides reverb and it's so fast. <laughs> like mm -hmm. and there's no there's no like fuss to create that reverb versus if you were to use, but you can also use something like an iRig. 
Um, Christian Daw says a basic setup I would consider is a Shure SM58 mic for vocals and a Shure SM57 for guitar and any USB audio interface that is under $200. Also, a Mac computer makes it much easier. Um, yeah, uh, I, I did use PC for the longest time, um, and it, it was fine, but, um, yeah, that's a great setup right there. It's awesome. Um, yeah, Joanne seems to be a fan. My Asian Sidna, she said, wow, oh, even better. Uh, <laughs> says, hello from Boston. Hello, I can hear you. Yay, sports for the blind. Ella! Olivia, don't even need a mic. I definitely need a mic, too. <laughs> Olivia is the audio engineer. I wish. Lena is actually amazing at audio. So um, I think that's a really, really cool. Lena was really there for like so many of those Periscope sessions where I was like, what about this? How does that sound? <laughs> so <laughs> pretty awesome. She's She's got a great ear. Yeah, it sounds like it. Just judging from some of the comments that she was leaving. So that's another thing to take into consideration for anyone that's watching the replay of this or is looking into getting into broadcasting music is look at some of the other musicians on HAPS and soon we will make it a little bit easier for that to happen um, in the Discover tab, hint, hint. But yeah, look at some of the other musicians that are, that are broadcasting, um, ask questions. I know Olivia is always available and, and happy to answer questions really quickly. And as you can see, people in the comments are also already ready to answer questions. So, um, great. Is there anything else that you want to chat about, Olivia, that people should know that want to get into the world of the tech side with broadcasting music? I think that above all, besides everything that we've talked about, equipment-wise and all of that, I think simplicity is, is awesome. And... If anything, most of my broadcasts have done has have been done let's just straight from the phone with without, you know, crazy high quality audio or anything. It's just been just turn on your phone, press live and start playing. <laughs> I think that's really the most simple answer and like kind of it's almost like the advice to just get out of our own heads because it's really just, it's, it's us, right? It's, it's us thinking that people are judging or like people are whatever because of the sound quality or whatever it is, but it's, it's really not about that. It's about connection. So if we were to be able to just go live and play and talk to people and connect with people, I think that's really the most important thing. Um, and you can add all these bells and whistles if you want to, but the most important thing is you, and mm -hmm. you going live. So just grab your phone and press live and start playing. That's, that's like the best thing you can do. Yeah, that's great. I mean, Ella said, I love acoustic with plain setup. Um, and then Christian is also offering a tip for um, recording. Always have backups. I, I hear that. I know that from... <laughs> From video side, I, I can only imagine if I were to lose, you know, stuff from video production, I always have backups, <laughs> always, always have backups. Anything that requires recording, um, even documents for everyone that's listening, <laughs> back them up to as many devices as you can. Um, Swift, I don't know if you're still around, but Olivia, you probably missed this, but we were making a beat together. What? Um, and so I'm going to invite him. If he's still around, hopefully he'll join and he can play that for us. Yes. Um, in the meantime, uh, let's see if there's any. It does, if anyone has any questions for Olivia, now is a great time to ask them while we are getting ready to wrap up this broadcast. Um, so, for anyone that's still tuned in, feel free to ask a question. Swift, you have an invite. Sweet. I was just getting into producing like a little while ago. So I'm really into like Ableton and the push and like all kinds of production things. I just started yeah. drum lessons. I heard, yeah, you, you, you were talking about drum lessons. So Swift has this really cool, he's, he was just sharing with us today that he has a, uh, a plugin that he found where he can um, live work on a, audio track and then send it to someone and then they can continue working on it and then send it right back and then they can just bounce it off of each other. So 
that's really cool. And maybe, you know, you should join in and <laughs> practice your production skills sometime. That would be sick. I think I would probably better serve as um, like a vocalist on the production or like a violinist on the production. Yeah. Because I think as a producer, I'm pretty bad. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah, I think Swift learned that I have no musical talents whatsoever because I, I was just doing the bass and I just had to tap one, two, three. <laughs> And that's it. Anything else, and I'm I'm completely useless when it comes to music. I don't. I yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> also, we all need to know our strengths and weaknesses. You know, a hundred percent. Being aware. Swift, what's up? There we are, what Swift. Up, what up, what up? Welcome. <laughs> so we need to do a tutorial Tuesday with you as well on the production side of things. Yeah. Oh, you, we can't hear you, Swift. <laughs> Maybe no tutorial Tuesday for you. If you can't get your mic working, <laughs> you're booted. <laughs> Nothing. Let's see why. He, yep, we're still getting the finger. <laughs> He's still working on it. Yep, no taps. We heard you at the start and then we lost you. Yeah, I might have changed a source or something. Oh, that's awesome to hear, Jane. So Jane used a beat from Swift for her new intro video for her Swift. art show. Swift, where do I find your beats? I'm always looking for beats. In fact, I need like a few beats right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he lost his phone. Awesome. I think he's reconnecting or changing his audio mic. Um, all right, here we go. All right. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Mm -hmm. yes. Are we good? Sorry about that. I do apologize with the microphone and the connection and issues and all that. But yeah. Um, like so, I said, I got Pablo in doing broadcast with me and, and there's a bit of a delay, so I do apologize with that. No worries. <laughs> um uh, Olivia had a question for you. Where can she find your beats? Because she's looking. Yeah. Where where do I look? YouTube, SoundCloud, uh, I saw my profile, you know, uh, some of the beats I haven't uploaded, a lot of content is basically on my hard drive. Of, I had music already instrumental called Sound Motion that we used to be on Spotify, iTunes and everything. But then I switched, I kind of, you know, once I got like people buying it and stuff, then I just put it on YouTube and SoundCloud. So that's the best place to put it. I'm just going to put my... Well, the thing, wait, let me just give it to you. SoundCloud. Hi, James. Welcome to the broadcast. We're just about wrapping up the Tutorial Tuesday, but it was a fun show where we talked a little bit about um, high quality music devices and what Olivia uses for her musical performances here on HAPS and other live broadcasting platforms. Um, and Swift join a, joined us because this morning, um, Pacific time, I was on his broadcast and we made, I, I did, I did a little thing. I, I participated in the beat. <laughs> and I'm really, really happy you did that and encourage that. People who are non, like, not professional musicians or t like that, just join in and have fun. And, you know, like, you, you'll never know. You'll, you might even just take up and just start making a beat on the iPad or something with GarageBand or, or something. It just starts off with that, that just start and just go for it and just play something let me see if the sounds are working can you hear the sound yes so i'm using um this program called a uh, voice meter and it's then basically synced my mic and my fl studio which is my sequencer that i'm using and then that's how i've used it on haps and then so then it will all connect anyway Pablo, sorry again in advance what I recorded in the beginning. It's just for fun, yeah? You might get some background noise of my dog's paws, too. <laughs> <laughs> right, ready for when you are.
Yeah. This is We're really just good. It. it kind of gives me like City Nights anime type vibes with with like the the keyboard there um but if you're wondering i did the bass <laughs> nice it was nice can you still hear me guys yeah yep yeah and we got we had like ann rush as well she was playing on the guitar as well it was so cool like seriously you, everyone i recommend like if you don't like I said, just come in, get your iPad, Android, whatever it is, whether it's your mobile phone, just even just press, so, get like a kitchen knife and fork and just go. <laughs> I just <want> that. <laughs> Love it. So, yeah, this program that I'm going to share on the chat before you wrap up the show, it's very, very, very straightforward. You download it like a VST, put it into your whatever program it is, invite your friend give them the like code whatever and they will see the same kind of sequence thing record your audio and then he can record his thing and drag and drop no emails no nothing wow That's amazing cool thank you Pat. yeah no problem. thanks for having me in the morning olivia thank you so much for doing this part of tutorial tuesday um for anyone that didn't catch this live it's going to be on my profile, but we're also starting to upload Tutorial Tuesdays up on the HAPS YouTube channel in our playlist that's actually linked in the feed. So if you just go to tutorials on haps.tv, it'll take you to our YouTube playlist that has um, our Tutorial Tuesdays. And the first one that's up there is with CS Murphy that he did last week, all about OBS and how to use that. So if you missed that, go check that out. Peter was an amazing host for that, and CS just spent um like 45 minutes explaining obs and how he uses it and if you all have seen his broadcast i'm sure you know how awesome they look wow cool. that's awesome great well awesome. thanks everyone for joining olivia you're amazing swift you're amazing everyone in the comments you're amazing pablo. <laughs> you're amazing pablo oh well, thanks thanks everyone all right uh, team are amazing Woo! <laughs> yes we will catch we will catch everyone tomorrow for roundtable. Um, and spoiler alert, it is also music. So we will see you all then. I think I froze. I'm I'm frozen on screen, but yeah, but it's a good freeze. Yeah, <laughs> am I like the team, right? so we could cut out like that or no? <laughs> yeah, you look really happy. <laughs> no, I'm taking me off now before someone screenshots it and saves it forever. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the. All right, everyone. Thanks, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Peace and love. We're going to end with that, that, that beat. Subscribe. <laughs>